welcome to video 4.1, Theory Model Concept Differentiation um, in the course AEDT2160, Online Learning Theories and Models. This is just a short, quick little video um, because as we go forward looking at different types of learning theories and how they intersect with online learning and the affordances that the online environment provides, it's important to get a sense of what is a theory, what is a model, and what is a concept. And so I thought I'd spend some time here taking a look at that with you. I've also put a link in the readings. It's something that we ended up having to get from the Wayback Machine because I found the link and then it promptly disappeared, um, which is why you'll see it in the Word document. So to prime you going into this, I'd like to give you some time to think about what role theory plays in your day-to-day -day life. How do you use models in your day-to-day -day life? And where do concepts become useful? in your day-to-day -day life. So before even you know, looking at some of the definitions we'll take a look at, just based on what you think a theory, a model, and a concept is, take some time to jot down your answers to those questions. So if we look at theory, and there are two definitions here. Uh, one, the bottom one is specific to educational theory. Um, it's a Wikipedia one, uh, but it's one that I thought actually works quite well to describe educational theory. The idea that it's speculative educational thought, it's guiding or explaining or describing practice. If we look at the top definition, this gets a little more general and at the same time specific. Um, so general to where it can apply across all kinds of different fields, um, but a little more detailed around what is in a theory. So it says here that it's a set of interrelated principles and definitions. So right there off the bat, you know that a theory is bigger. It's sort of a bigger entity than something um, just sort of a good idea. This is a set of interrelated principles presenting a systematic view of a phenomena. So it's looking at it in a very logical way. And it does this by specifying relationships among the variables. So already now we're starting to see, okay, this is bigger than just having a good idea. This is something that's, you know, connecting larger chunks of thought. And the purpose of the theory is to explain the natural phenomena. So something that you're seeing in the world, something that uh, has been, you know, something you've been pondering, you, you speculate and you theorize about it. There are all kinds of different uh, theories, of course, as we would expect, given the different types of things you're looking at in education. As we get into the learning theories, you will start to see that they are connecting larger parts or larger big chunks of information. They're not just stringing together loosely related ideas, but they're connecting interrelated principles and definitions to provide that systematic view and specify relationships. So moving forward, the next video on behaviorism, you'll start to, th to see why behaviorism is indeed a theory. Now when we think of a model, we're looking at a simplified version of reality and it attempts to order reality from a very particular perspective. So for me what really works when you think of the model are the definitions provided in our article. So physical models. So we all know what you know, we've got here the scale models of an aircraft. Uh, my husband's a furniture maker and he makes little small physical design models prior to making a large piece of furniture for a client. So he's making that simplified version of reality that orders the reality from a particular perspective. He can test his design, he can see where he's going to have some flaws and where he needs to adjust before going on large scale. Symbolic models are, for example, mathematical equations. So the use of symbols and the, the symbols have come to mean something in that community and it allows us to have a symbolic model. And then conceptual models are ones that we're probably most familiar with because we doodle and we do this in our daily lives. We try to create things like circuit diagrams, flow charts, a diagram of how different concepts connect if we're trying to explain th things to someone. Um, so conceptual models are something we're probably the most familiar with. And so what about this notion of a concept? Hmm. So the concept is the tricky part 
because it's something that's not concrete and it has no meaning. It's up to us to define what we mean by the concept in a way that has a general degree of acceptance. So this is really, really um, obvious when you start working with kids who, who challenge lots of our grown-up concepts and want to know what they are. And as you try to articulate what things are like uh, trust, it be <laughs> it starts to get a little difficult because it's it's abstract, and we have all decided that generally we know what we mean when we say um, concept or the concept of of gravity. Um, we've all decided what that is, uh, but it is hard to explain it. Explain it. Generally, they're a lower level of abstraction than a theory, but theories rely on concepts. So you can have a, a concept or an idea that, um, for example, in adult learning, that it needs to be real life and grounded in um, the real reality of the adult in order for the learning to be meaningful. So that's one concept around adult learning. And together, there are several. Um, as you look at different adult learning theories, there are several concepts that start to string together and help to form a theory around adult learning or a theory around, as we're going to look at next, behaviorism. And so just as we're going forward and looking at some of these theories, behaviorism, constructivism, connectivism, really test them against the, these notions of concept, model, and theory. Which are they? Are they really a theory? Are they better just, are they more just like a model? Um, or are they actually just a, a concept or a series of concepts that haven't quite made it into a theory yet? Or are they just a really good idea and there hasn't been enough backing or research behind them to get it into the notion of a concept, a model, or a theory? So just keep that in mind as we're going forward because it's, it's something, it's a different lens to look at the readings with. Um, and it will help you be able to justify and describe and defend to some, ex to some extent the different approaches that we're going to be looking at as we look at some of the learning theories and how they connect with some of the affordances of the online environment and online learning. So in terms of synthesis questions, I'd like you to consider the impact of concepts on theory development. Can you develop a theory without a concept? I know this is starting to sound very abstract, isn't it? <laughs> Give some thought to that. And then the last one, how do models help theories? What role does the model play? All right, I will leave you to ponder, and uh, I look forward to talking about this in our tutorial.